it's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's weekly media roundup. Um, tonight's host, Roland Boyden, for a special live broadcast from downtown in uh, Pliny Park, where the tree lighting ceremony has uh, just finished, which means we've got uh, a full set of lights here in the park. A little bit of rain as well, but it hasn't dampened the spirits here for this gallery walk, so we'll get ready to broadcast. Uh, special thanks to everybody up at the station at BCTV. They're going to be doing the switching today, which means they'll be rolling in all the clips, the split screens, the graphics, uh, following my hopefully none too subtle cues, like uh, one that I'm going to give them now to roll the coming up on deck graphics. Uh, so hopefully you can see that. We're going to talk a little bit about the 214 Elliott Street apartment complex and its final hours as it was demolished this week following the fire that gutted it uh, in downtown Brattleboro this past month. We'll also uh, get you caught up on the governor's trip to Brattleboro. That includes his uh, million-dollar grant announcement for the Wyndham uh, Windsor Housing Trust. And uh, there's nothing like Gallery Walk, of course. So we're going to get uh, a look back at the tree lighting ceremony, which happened uh, just moments ago. That's last year's you're looking at on the screen now. But uh, we've also got footage from this year's uh, tree lighting ceremony and plenty more from Gallery Walk as well. Plus, uh, we'll get uh, weather courtesy of the high school and much, much more. So uh, be sure to stick with us right here on 545 Live and launch into that uh, intro clip. BCTV's Roland Boyden joining you live from Elliott Street in downtown Brattleboro with the fire that broke out at the apartment complex last month has officially claimed the life of the building. Demolition has begun today. In the meantime, thanks for watching. All right, with that, we'll welcome you back to this live Pliny Park remote broadcast at December 6th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. That's footage of this week's 545 Live special report on the demolition of 214 Elliott Street, uh, the uh, three and a half story apartment complex that was ravaged by a five alarm fire this October that rendered 17 local residents homeless and uh, claimed the life of the building ultimately forever. As it was announced uh, last month that the building would be torn down, torn down it was. So let's uh, roll into that footage here for a moment, and then uh, after we take a look at uh, the dumb demolition footage, we'll launch into a 5.45 Live Rewind in Time so that uh, we can see the fire in action as part of uh, the 5.45 Live special original coverage. So without further ado, let's see that. BCTV's Roland Boyden reporting for 545 Live on a five alarm fire that broke out in a three and a half story apartment complex on Elliott Street in downtown Brattleboro, drawing departments from Keene, Putney, and other surrounding areas, throwing a plume of smoke over the downtown area that drew bystanders, including 545 Live's Joe Bushy, who gathered footage of the Red Cross and Brattleboro Town Manager Patrick Moreland helping in the evacuation process as displaced residents looked for a place to stay for the night. Hopefully uh, getting a look there at a 545 Live Rewind in time to our initial coverage of the fire at 214 Elliott Street. The building was demolished this week. Okay, next up, Governor Shumlin's in Brattleboro this week. Uh, he actually was on the second floor of the Barry 230 Main Street Municipal Center the BCTV occupies as he held a press conference to announce the addition of one million community development block grant dollars to a Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust stewarded revolving loan fund, which should allow the area nonprofit to back continuing post-Irene projects with lower no interest loans. We were there uh, to gather that press conference footage on Wednesday and take a little bit uh, of a look at the governor's trip to town. Let's roll that clip. I want to first thank Governor Shumlin for uh, for putting the housing needs of Vermonters front and center in his administration through this critical program and also through the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. So thank you so much. As you know, we're having a tremendous challenge with homelessness in Vermont. And it's much cheaper and much better investment 
and a much more humane approach to ensure that we're doing the financial counseling and the intervention to keep people in their homes uh, than the dire alternative of having them removed from their homes because they can't make ends meet. Special thanks to Cora Trowbridge who got that clip that you hopefully just get to see a, a peek of of the governor at the uh, Brattleboro Area Chamber of Commerce Holiday Mixer. All right, uh, with that, we'll move on in the stories here, and I believe uh, Vermont Yankee is next here as we uh, continue from this live Pliny Park broadcast. And this week, the anti-nuclear affinity group Safe and Green hosted a diverse panel of area experts on both sides of the nuclear issue uh, for an open forum on the ever-confusing uh, topic of Safe Store, a nuclear regulatory commission-approved uh, post-shutdown process that could spread Vermont Yankee's own decommissioning process out over uh, an additional 60 years of time. That's uh, leaving plenty of space to argue many area activists for financial instability on the part of the plant's out-of-state owners, Entergy Nuclear, to jeopardize successful completion of the decommissioning process, which could stick Vermont taxpayers, not just with the check, but with half a century of potentially deadly nuclear waste to contend with as well. Uh, for more on this, we'll recall some additional video from Tuesday's panel, as each expert uh, did their best to help lay out the elements of a less than black and white issue. These next years coming up could be the most difficult um, of any of the times that we have spent working on this issue. In 1978, I gathered some uh, engineering students at SUNY Buffalo uh, to look at decommissioning. And we noticed that there were some radionuclides there that would be very long lived. Uh, and the industry had said nothing about it. The issue of what Roe had done to us and the radioactive waste they routinely and regularly dumped into the Deerfield River was uh, real and immediate to us. This was not an abstract demonstration of how democracy could work in the cleanup of a nuclear reactor. This was the issue of protecting our community. All right, uh, welcome back. It's a uh, thanks to hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez that you got to see that clip from the Safe and Green sponsored uh, panel on Safe Store and Vermont Yankees decommissioning plans. Uh, for more on this topic, we'll launch into our newest feature, the Commons Report, which means uh, launching the split screen for uh, our team back in BCTV studios. See if they can get us into it again, and I'll uh, do my part on uh, my side of the screen here. As again this week, VermontDigger.org star Ann Galloway uh, lent some of her reporting expertise to the Commons' latest issue with an in-depth article on the continuing decommissioning negotiations between the state and Entergy Nuclear over the company's plans for the plant. Uh, with Governor Shumlin himself uh, joining top members of his staff and State Attorney General Bill Sorrell for the negotiations. And that's a look at our Commons report with the split screen. If you want that full article, you can find it at commonsnews.org, where you can also sign up to become a media sponsor and support the local weekly newspaper. I think I'm just uh, going to keep going in the script here now. Hopefully we're back on my full shot. Next up, this summer's news that notorious Boston Mafia leader Whitey Bulger had been found guilty of enough counts of racketeering to warrant two lifetimes in federal prison has had news outlets across the country all a chatter, but for Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Kevin Cullen, this story means a little something more, as his work with the Boston Globe during Bulger's reign as crime lord of South Boston had Cullen fearing for his life on more than one occasion, something uh, that he was in town at the Brooks Memorial Library this week to present on, backing his latest full-length publication entitled Whitey Bulger and the Manhunt that Brought Him to Justice. Again, it's BCTV hardworking volunteer Maria Dominguez that was there to gather footage of uh, the book reading. Let's take a look. Whitey was, at, at a very young age, was extremely conscious of what he was doing. He knew he was going to be a criminal. And yet he knew to be a successful criminal in the neighborhood, in the culture, the milieu he grew up in, you couldn't be just feared, you had to be liked. Again, thanks to hardworking uh, BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez, who uh, records and puts up all of those uh, first Wednesday lectures in both standard and high definition on BCTV's uh, official website, brattlebrotv.org, and shows them on BCTV Channel 8, including that one, the latest Whitey Bulger and the manhunt that brought him to justice with uh, Pulitzer Prize winner Kevin Cullen. Shows all this week on BCTV Channel 8. All right, uh, back into the script we go here. We're going to 
talk a little bit about uh, why I'm standing here getting a little bit wet and a little bit cold uh, here in Pliny Park. But uh, like uh, everyone else here in the park, the cold and the wet hasn't got to me. Spirits are high as the downtown tree was just lit up behind me. Let's uh, see if we can get really fancy here and roll a clip from the card that uh, was just raced up the street and back to BCTV Studios so that we could play an unfiltered, unedited uh, clip of the uh, tree lighting ceremony that just happened. Let's roll it, guys. You guys ready to start counting down 10? Sure. Nine. All right, well, uh, it may be a little wet in downtown, but there's plenty, plenty of good stuff going on here. You can uh, check out the tree lighting ceremony uh, in Pliny Park. The tree is officially lit now if you want to come down. There's also uh, plenty more going on all up and down Main Street with galleries open. There's food, there's art, uh, so if uh, you're so inclined, come and check it out. Uh, if you want more details on what's going on this weekend here in the area, we've got a slick new feature we call our interactive video calendar. It gives me a chance each Thursday to hop up in front of BCTV's giant new video wall in our 230 Main Street downtown studios and point to some interactive link buttons in front of a cool new calendar graphic. It's all sponsored by the Brattleboro Savings and Loan, letting us uh, sum up the area's events in a cool new feature. Let's roll a clip of it, see what we've got uh, in store for us this weekend. Speaking of art, this weekend a group of area artisans will gather at a residence on Cherry Street. 44 Cherry Street is a beautiful big Victorian house and we clear out all the furniture and set up displays of our work for uh, a weekend. And the kitchen turns into a cafe and then we have live music on Saturday evening and you can come and just have a meal there. You don't have to buy anything, just enjoy the whole atmosphere of it or um, combine it with shopping. And that will move on to Sunday afternoon here with the Pause for Prevention, a family and pet friendly winter holiday photo event. Now, Pause for Prevention encourages pet owners, families, and children, plus community members, to participate by having a professional photo taken in a winter holiday scene for a suggested donation. Proceeds of the event benefit not only the Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition, but also the Wyndham County Humane Society. All right, that does it for another edition of 545 Live here, but uh, I believe that we have some weather for you for the weekend. Take a look at the forecast. This is courtesy of BUHS-TV, Brattleboro Union High School's Morning News Advisory Broadcast Crew. On Saturday, we got a high of 34 and a low of 14 with 10% chance of rain, partly cloudy. And then on Sunday, we got a high of 32 and a low of 23, 20% chance of snow. Have a good weekend. Back to the desk. Okay, that does it for another edition of 545 Live here. Thanks for checking in with me down here in Pliny Park. Thanks to the BCTV crew who's been uh, trying to catch my signals for which clip to roll when on short notice and click back and forth between our various split screens and features. Hopefully they're queuing up our end credits with that uh, little drum roll thing that we like to get going here so that as soon as I uh, say my bit here and turn it loose, they can uh, roll some end credits and get us out of here for this 545 Live. But we'll be back next week with a whole new solution of web feature uploads including that video calendar and of course another full broadcast next Friday 5:45 p.m. Eastern Time right here on BCTV Comcast Channel 8. In the meantime come check out Gallery Walk if you're so inclined or any one of the other area holiday themed events going on and uh, be sure to check in with us next week for 5:45 live as well. In the meantime thanks for watching. Everybody up? Hold on to this. This is the hard part, the humiliating part. Get us out. Beautiful. All right, congratulations.